Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing beloved Hogwarts headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. More specifically, I'm going to be discussing aspects of Dumbledore's character that people who have only seen the films won't know. That's right, if you're a book reader, you probably know all of these, at least I hope so. But if you've only watched Harry Potter on the silver screen, then you're in for a shock. Dumbledore is a main character, and a complex one at that, so you may be surprised at just how much of him was left out of the films. Let's get into it. Number 10. His Letter to Aunt Petunia Petunia Evans was Harry's aunt, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Evans, and the sister of Lily Evans. Aside from a few moments of clarity in the books and films, Petunia, along with her husband Vernon, are primarily portrayed as bad people. They mistreated Harry from a very young age and despised all things magical. But what might surprise you if you've only seen the films is that Petunia wasn't always so bad. You see, Petunia's hatred of the magical world stemmed from the fact that her sister was a witch and she wasn't. Jealousy was her biggest problem. In fact, she even wrote to Dumbledore several times asking if she would be able to attend Hogwarts along with her sister. Eventually, Dumbledore wrote back and had to politely decline Petunia's request to attend the school. She wasn't a witch, so there was no way that she could ever go to a magical school. Makes sense. 9. Jam Dumbledore certainly loves his sweets. This is highlighted in both the books and films. Sherbet lemons, acid pops, Bertie Bott's every flavor beans, these were all treats that Dumbledore enjoyed. In fact, Dumbledore's office was password protected with the name of his favorite treat. Now, I know you're dying to know, what's the relevance of jam here? Well, it's revealed in the books that Dumbledore's favorite jam is raspberry. This information is given to Harry so that he can confirm Dumbledore's identity. 8. Tom Riddle's Job Application The defense against the Dark Arts Professor role at Hogwarts is cursed. That's why no professor seems to be able to keep the role for more than one school year. I'm not sure if you noticed the trend of a new Danda Professor in each and every book film. So what's the deal? Well, it all started with Voldemort, or at that time Tom Riddle, himself interviewing for the position. Who was his interviewer? Why, Dumbledore of course. Voldemort wasn't openly evil yet, and to many, he was still just a promising young Hogwarts graduate. But Dumbledore, who sharp as attack, knew that Riddle wanted the role for nefarious reasons. From that day onward, Riddle, Voldemort cursed the role so that no one would ever be able to teach Dada for more than one year. 7. He was a Hogwarts Prefect Like everyone else, even the all-powerful and wise Dumbledore once walked through the halls of Hogwarts for the very first time. He was sorted into Gryffindor House and quickly befriended Elphias Doge, a wizard who later joined the Order of the Phoenix. Albus was an incredible student while they attended the school, performing extremely well on all of his newts and even receiving the Barnabas Finkley Prize for exceptional spellcasting. He was a top-tier student, in the Deathly Hallows book, it's later revealed that Dumbledore was both prefect and head boy during his time at school. No surprises there. 6. His Funeral In the films, Dumbledore is killed by Severus Snape during the Battle of the Astronomy Tower. But though the moment is certainly sad and impactful, there isn't really much follow-up after Dumbledore's death. In the books, however, Dumbledore's death is heavily highlighted, and there's even a funeral that takes place to honor the deceased headmaster. The funeral was a grand occasion, with a vast number of attendees, including Ministry of Magic officials, Hogwarts students and professors, Order of the Phoenix members, the Landlord of the Leaky Cauldron, the Night Bus Driver, Madame Malkin, and even some of his enemies. The list goes on. Dumbledore ends up being buried on the Hogwarts grounds. 5. Dumbledore's Visit to the Dursley Home One rather big omission from the films was Dumbledore himself paying a visit to the Dursley residence to pick up Harry. After inviting himself into their home and an interesting engagement, he says the following, You did not do as I asked. You have never treated Harry as a son. He has known nothing but neglect and often cruelty at your hands. The best that can be said is that he has at least escaped the appalling damage you had inflicted upon the unfortunate boy sitting between you. Ouch. 4. Death of his sister We know from the Harry Potter films that Dumbledore's sister, Ariana, is dead but what's not properly explained is how she died. More importantly, it's not revealed that Dumbledore feels that he himself may have been the killer. The following passage highlights this. It was the truth I feared. You see, I never knew which of us, in that last horrific fight, had actually cast the curse that killed my sister. 
You may call me cowardly, you would be right. Harry, I dreaded beyond all things the knowledge that it had been I who brought about her death, not merely through my arrogance and stupidity, but that I actually struck the blow that snuffed out her life. Dumbledore went about his days with the knowledge that he may have been the one to kill her, which must have been impossibly hard to deal with. 3. His Portrait Hogwarts headmasters commonly receive portraits after their death. These portraits are meant to act as memoirs of the deceased, honoring their existence. McGonagall once explained to Harry that these portraits are also supposed to be a support mechanism for the decisions of the new headmaster. What you didn't see in the film, however, was a portrait of good old Dumbledore. At one stage, when Harry, Ron, and Hermione enter the headmaster's office, they see a familiar face staring back at them. 2. Voldemort vs Dumbledore The duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore inside of the Ministry Atrium in the Order of the Phoenix is the best duel in the entire series. It's two of the most powerful wizards going head to head, and it's impressive in both the books and the films. However, some of the magic that Dumbledore uses in this duel is completely omitted from the film, and I want to highlight this magic because it's pretty cool. You see, amidst the chaos, Dumbledore actually uses his impressive magical ability to transfigure statues to life, which protect Harry and other students. I have nothing more to say to you, Potter, Voldemort said quietly. You have irked me too often, for too long. Avada Kedavra. Harry had not even opened his mouth to resist. His mind was blank, his wand pointing uselessly at the floor. But the headless golden statue of the wizard in the fountain had sprung alive, leaping from its plinth to land with a crash on the floor between Harry and Voldemort. The spell merely glanced off its chest as the statue flung out its arms to protect Harry. Number 1. Memories If you know Dumbledore, then you'll know that he's an affinity for gadgets and magical artifacts. One artifact in particular, the pensive, plays a pretty big role in the story. A pensive is of course a magical object used to review memories, but one thing required to use the pensive are, well, well, memories. In the films, we see lots of memories, Snape's, Dumbledore's own when he visits Tom Riddle, Slughorn's interactions with Tom Riddle, etc. But it's never mentioned in the films that Dumbledore also has other memories that he can review. These memories belong to Bob Ogden, an old Ministry employee, Honky the House Elf, and Morphin Gaunt. And that's it for this video. If you like this type of content, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Who do you want to see next? Comment down below. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to check out my Top 5 Richest Wizarding Families video, which I'll link in the pinned comment. Until next time, remember, differences of habit and language are nothing at all, if our aims are identical and our hearts are open.